In this lesson, I wanna talk about a really powerful bubble feature for organizing your workflows, especially as our apps start to become more complex. And I wanna start by showing a real scenario in our Wonderlog app where this feature is gonna be really handy. So I've been testing my app here and I noticed that whenever I toggle to this inspiration view of the map, it takes me to just a random part of the map. It seems to be centered on New York. And so what I think I wanna do is, hey, if there isn't any inspiration markers available, then maybe let's just not move the map at all at the very least because it's just a little bit disorientating and confusing for the user so i've gone to my map view and i've looked at the workflow that is triggered whenever the user toggles between my trips and inspiration and there's a fair amount going on here just to start but if i was to try to adjust this logic so that we don't actually move the map when we toggle to inspiration and there aren't any public diary entries to view. And so what that would mean would be adjusting the condition that fires on this action here to say that it's not just when we swap to the inspiration mode that I want you to move the map, but also we only want to move the map if let's say we're doing a search for diary entries, right? Public diary entries and that list of diary entries is not empty uh, and that search is something that exists already over here right we're already defining what we want to send to the map around if there is at least one public trip and i'm also using that same search over here in this first action and so potentially now i'm having to set up this search for a third time and add all of these same constraints like okay public has to be set to yes and the location field has to be not empty and blah, 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 right? I'm setting up all these same constraints. And it's pretty easy for me to make a mistake in this process. And that would then introduce some kind of bug into my app. It also means that if I wanna change this search, I've gotta change it in three places. I've gotta change it over in this action where we're actually displaying the markers on the map. I've got to change it here where we're pulling out the first diary entry in the list to display the map around. And I've also now got to do it potentially in this third area in this condition. Not only that, there are one, two, three, four actions here, all related to toggling to this inspiration mode. And so things are getting just a little bit unwieldy, a little bit kind of hard to manage here. And so the concept that I want to introduce to manage this is called custom events. So if you imagine we got a normal workflow here with step one, step two, what we could do for step two is actually trigger an entirely new workflow, just in the same way as we trigger a backend workflow. So this new workflow over on the right hand side is what we call a custom event. And it has its own self-contained set of steps that it's going to complete once it's triggered. And once that custom event or this custom workflow in effect is finished, then it's going to restart or rejoin the original workflow that fired it. And so that initial workflow can continue progressing through its steps. So in effect, a custom event is just the same thing as a backend workflow, except we define it here within the context of a view or a page if you were developing for web. And why I think a custom event is relevant in this context is because I could have one custom event for all of my inspiration mode actions. And I can also, in a custom event, pass data into it in the same way as we pass data into a backend workflow. So if you recall, we've got this delete user account backend workflow that we set up earlier in the course. We set up this key value here. So this is just like a property. We're passing some data into this backend workflow that it can then use within its actions. And when we go to trigger this backend workflow, which in our app we're doing via this delete my account view, when we go to schedule that backend workflow, we pass in the user in exactly the same way as we pass in a property to a view when we display a view. And so we can do exactly the same thing for custom events. 
So on my map view here, I'm going to create a new custom event. And this is just simply going to be toggle inspiration mode. It's literally all it's going to do. And so what I want to do now is I want to migrate all of the actions that are related to this inspiration mode. So these four here into the new custom event that we created. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to hit these three dots for all of these actions. And I'm just going to copy for now. And then within my custom event, right click and paste. We're going to get a broken condition. That's okay. We're going to come back and clean this up. The reason why I actually wanted to copy these rather than cut them is so we can preserve the original version of these actions and by proxy the original condition so we can compare with the new action as it's been migrated and see whether or not we need to keep that condition spoiler alert we don't but let's just take things one step at a time so i'm going to do this for all of them i'm going to copy all of these actions and paste them in my new custom event so this alert sheet as well and updating the user when they've seen that inspiration alert that's also related to this inspiration mode. So I'm going to put that one in as well. And now let's have a look at these broken conditions just before we remove all of these old versions of the actions. So the first thing that we're doing is we're displaying a set of markers onto the map. And so this first one here has a broken condition. The original version of this action is this guy here. And the condition is saying, I only want you to display these markers when the map mode is inspiration. That's the same condition that we've got on one, now two, three separate actions that are all now within this new custom event. And is this actually necessary within the context of our new custom event? Well, this custom event, we only want to fire this when the user actually moves from my trips to inspiration, right? So we'll have an only win condition here, which is going to check whether the current items map mode is inspiration. And then we're going to move into this custom event and we're going to fire all of these actions. So we don't need to also have, hey, only display the markers when the current map mode is inspiration because this action to display the markers will only exist within a custom event that's been fired when the current map mode is inspiration, right? This is redundant. This, if I right click and clear it out, is redundant. And this one, well, this is basically redundant as well. The last one, this one is fine. The last one, we only do want to update this when the user's seen inspiration alert field is no. But because we've now migrated all of these actions, we don't need any of the original one. So we can delete this one. We can delete this one. This show alert sheet, we can delete this too, but let's just take a quick note of the condition here. We only want to be showing this sheet when the current user's scene inspiration alert field, which is a yes no field, is set to no. So that is the same condition that we should add on our new version of this action within our custom event. When the current user's scene inspiration alert field is no. And once we've done that, we can remove the old version here of that action. And this is the last action that we've migrated, so we're gonna delete the original. And so now, look how tidy our workflow looks here. We've gone from having, I think, six actions to three, and four of those original actions are now nice and tidy, tucked away within this custom event. So what will happen when the user taps on inspiration is that first, we're gonna fire this custom event, then we're gonna go one, two, three, four, through all of these actions, and then return and fire this action within the original workflow, and then finally this one. So this is much better organized, but it's really only half the reason why setting up a custom event was a good idea here. The other is that we've got a bit of duplication in the sense that we've got this non-trivial search expression here with quite a few constraints, and we've got exactly the same search expression over here. And whenever you have multiple things that you're basically duplicating in multiple places, you're increasing the chances that you're gonna make a mistake. You're increasing the chances that I need to update these search expressions, and you're gonna update something in one place, like let's say it's only gonna be showing diary entries within the last two weeks, and then you're just gonna to forget to do it in the other place, and so things are just gonna get out of sync, and you're gonna introduce bugs into your app. 
okay? And this is something that violates a principle in the wider programming world, just as appropriate for building apps in Bubble, which is the do not repeat yourself principle, often abbreviated to dry. And one way that we cannot violate this principle and make our lives easier, which is the most important thing, is actually to set a parameter here on the custom event, which is going to hold or store the list of diary entries that we actually want to display. So in other words, we're using in effect a container here where we're gonna define the search expression just in one place, and then we're gonna reference the value of that container, i.e. that one search expression, in all of the different places that we need it. So I'm gonna add a new parameter here for this list of diary entries, which I'll just call diary entries, very straightforward. And this is gonna be a type diary entry and it is going to be a list. And what this means then is that when I trigger this custom event, which I'm doing from here, I now have the option to pass in a list of diary entries. So in exactly the same way as when we trigger a backend workflow, we pass some data in. So what I'm gonna put here is actually this same search expression that we set up earlier. So I'm gonna right click it and I'm going to paste it inside of here. And what this means is that now inside of all of the actions where I need to access the list of diary entries, I'm instead, if I right click and clear this out, I'm instead just going to pull the diary entries down from this diary entries parameter that's been passed into my parent workflow. And we'll do the same thing over here. We'll grab, if I just clear this out, we'll grab the diary entries. And in this case, we're grabbing the first items location. And so when we test this out, you see that everything seems to work just fine. But so what about this original issue where if I go to the inspiration tab and there's nothing to show, I'm just going to a random place on the map. Well, I want to test this on my Bubble Go version. So I'm going to remove all of the public diary entries so we can test this behavior. And the easiest way for me to do that is actually just to add some ridiculous uh, search constraint here, like the unique ID equals one, which obviously is going to be true for any diary entries. And then what should happen on Bubble Go is that I can replicate the fundamental issue. Okay, that's fine. And to solve this, what we can now do is we can solve it within the context of our toggle inspiration view custom event. And it's this action here that's kind of the culprit, right? Because we're firing this action to adjust the position of the map no matter what even if there isn't any diary entries to display. And it seems like the default behavior here when it doesn't have any data to center on is to head to New York. So I wanna add a condition here, which checks basically, are there any diary entries to display right now? Any public diary entries? And if there aren't, then we won't fire this action at all. Now, in our previous setup, this would have meant, again, recreating, do a search for diary entries where public is equal to yes, blah, 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 right? It would have meant duplicating the search expression, what would have been a third time, uh, which just starts to get really, really messy. But what we can do instead is that we can now just take a look at the list of diary entries that's coming into this custom event and we can say is the count greater than or equal to one in other words are there at least one public diary entry for me to look at right now on the map and only if that's true then are we going to adjust the map otherwise we're just going to leave it where it is and so if we test this out now by hitting inspiration you see that nothing changed the map didn't move so this works and it works in quite a well-organized elegant way behind the scenes thanks to custom events. So custom events can be a super helpful way of organizing your application as it starts to gain in complexity. And I encourage you to try to use them as much as you can.